When people think of the oil and gas industry, they often think of damage done to the environment by the extraction and use of such minerals. One man defied this stereotype and used his wealth from the energy industry to build a community in harmony with the environment that he believed would change the world for the better. That man was George P. Mitchell and his legacy is the Woodlands, Texas. The story of the Woodlands begins with the story of George Mitchell. George Fideus Mitchell was born in 1919 in Galveston, Texas to first-generation Greek immigrants. His father worked for the railroad and changed the family name to Mitchell because his supervisor could not spell his Greek name correctly. George Mitchell attended Texas A&M University where he studied petroleum engineering and graduated first in his class. George's professors noted his solid work ethic, business drive, and environmental concern as key qualities to Mitchell's vision for his future. While at A&M, Mitchell was active in the Corps of Cadets, which led to him serving during World War II in the Army Corps of Engineers upon graduation. After leaving the military, Mitchell began work in the energy industry to support his wife and 10 children. Using his strong business sense, he began work as an independent geologist in Houston. He went on to create his own oil and gas company, the Mitchell Energy and Development Corporation. During these formative years, he still viewed oil and gas as limited resources he believed ought to be used in harmony with nature, and viewed natural gas as a bridge to sustainable energy. He even pioneered the technique known as hydraulic fracturing, which has vastly increased America's natural gas reserves, and earned him the nickname, the father of shale gas. As Mitchell's energy company continued to expand and grow, he decided to diversify the company's holdings with the addition of a real estate development wing. Mitchell began with smaller developments in Austin, Aspen, and Galveston, and through his participation in a leadership organization known as the Young Presidents Organization, he became aware of race and political issues associated with American cities in the 1960s. Mitchell wanted a community that remained healthy and vibrant at its center, and realized he had the opportunity to create such a community through carefully planned real estate development. Mitchell began visiting many different planned communities across the globe, including the cities started under the United States New Town Movement, such as James Rouse's Columbia, as well as a tour of European planned communities with members of the Young Presidents Organization. These visits inspired his vision for a new community, not just a suburb, but a whole community, one that consisted of income and racial diversity, environmental sustainability, and job availability. In the 1960s, Mitchell began assembling land for this new development that he had dreamt of. He worked with Houston architect Carl Kamrath to create a plan for this ideal community. In 1970, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development passed the New Community Development Act, which provided loan guarantees for private developers attempting to develop new communities. And in 1971, Mitchell applied for funding through the federal government. Mitchell's preliminary plan, in collaboration with Kamrath, was rejected, and Hood requested a new firm to design the plan on the development's final application. Mitchell was unsure how he should proceed. However, Robert Hartsfield, one of Mitchell's staff members for Mitchell Energy and Development, suggests he read a book by one of his old professors, Ian McCarg, called Design with Nature. After reading the book, Mitchell hired McCarg's firm, Wallace McCarg Robertson Todd, to collaborate with architect William Pereira to develop a master plan for the new development. Mitchell also called up multiple members of Ross's development team for Columbia. Together, Pereira, Wallace McCarg Robertson Todd, and the Columbia consultants formed the team that would eventually develop the plan for the Woodlands. The Woodlands was initially planned for 150,000 people on 15,000 acres. It was planned to be a collection of neighborhoods called Villages, with a town center running along the interstate. This idea was similar to Clarence Perry's neighborhood unit, with each neighborhood centered on a community center or school, with housing parks and local shops to support the neighborhood. McCark's primary contribution to the Woodlands was its environmental and ecological plan. Two years before starting development, McCark and his team of 10 scientists made plans to preserve 25% of the original vegetation. McCarg was a very rational thinker and considered the many different aspects of ecology and social structures involved with making up a new community. McCarg's planning approach determined building densities and land use based on the hydrological properties of the soil or permeability. Eventually, the Wallace, McCarg, Roberts, and Todd team concluded that the site's hydrology was the most important aspect of the environmental plan because its hydrology was naturally problematic. The woodland site is located on a flat plain situated in a pine forest that is susceptible to flooding. In fact, 33% of the land lies in a 100-year floodplain. The natural stormwater mitigation system the McCarg's team developed cost $14.5 million less than a conventional system would have. 
The overall plan that resulted from the joint efforts of Pereira, McCarg's firm, and the Columbia collaborators retained a large amount of vegetation while establishing landscape and architecture guidelines to direct future development. A total of six villages were planned and included small commercial and community centers within them. A larger central commercial district was planned for the entire community. The plan attempted to integrate multiple income levels within the villages, and gated subdivisions were banned. Golf course ponds were used to retain street runoff, and the water was recycled to use for lawn irrigation. The plan also incorporated several recreational bike and pedestrian paths. Finally, after years of planning, the woodlands broke ground, and on October 19, 1974, the grand opening was held for the first village of Grogan's Mill. At this time, the development was in financial trouble. In the late 70s and early 80s, the Texas real estate crash brought the development closer to bankruptcy. The new community's program was terminated in 1983, and in order to prevent bankruptcy, George Mitchell stepped in with his own personal funds to keep the development afloat. Economic prosperity and the Texas real estate boom of the 1990s gave Mitchell an opportunity to release himself from HUD's $50 million loan guarantee. The Woodlands is the only one of the original 13 new communities offered loan guarantees by HUD that did not default on its loans or file for bankruptcy. In 1997, because of a decision made by the board of directors of Mitchell's Energy Company, Mitchell had to walk away from the Woodlands. He sold the development to the firm Crescent and Morgan Stanley for $543 million. However, until his death in 2013, Mitchell remained emotionally invested in the development and frequently offered advice to the new owners of the Woodlands. Due to Mitchell's financial separation from the Woodlands, he no longer had control over the development standards. Today, the development is not consistent with many of Mitchell and McCarg's original development standards. The original development focused on McCarg's environmental planning techniques, Title VII guidelines under the new community program, and had banned gated communities. In contrast, today's development includes a curb and gutter system along the streets, more conventional suburban neighborhood units, as well as gated communities. Today, the Woodlands is a thriving and attractive community, representing what Dolores Hayden would call the triple dream, house, land, and community. People are drawn to the Woodlands because of its parks, waterways, housing, and commercial developments. The defining aspects of the Woodlands are the environmental techniques McCarg's team proved feasible and the vision of George Mitchell that would later be described as a low-impact development and an example of smart growth. The Woodlands as a private development is an important study which Ann Forsyth explains as the best case scenario for comprehensive private sector development. The uniqueness and attractiveness of the Woodlands has made it valuable in the real estate market, meaning Mitchell's initial vision of a well-integrated community has not been met, especially since his departure from the development. Perhaps, if more communities adopted the vision Mitchell pioneered, well-balanced and attractive communities would be available to all. Texas.